Oh no. Oh no, it's stuck. Oh, that was a hit. That was a hit. We just got slammed. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Guys, what's going on? I'm out with the camper van right now, and uh, we're going up to a lake that's just absolutely beautiful. We're gonna camp there with the van, spend a night there, catch some fish, cook them up together. But I just had to stop here real quick. Check out this river. Salmon come up this river actually and spawn, and I'll be fishing this river later in the season for salmon. And if you're wondering why the river's all white like that, it's because it's runoff from a giant volcano that has huge glaciers on it. It's called Mount Rainier. It's the biggest mountain we have in Washington state. It's one of the biggest in the US. Look at this water, it's super, super cold. Ah, oh, feels great. So the glaciers essentially are slowly sliding down that mountain, carving all that rock, and it creates a bunch of rock dust that's white. And that's what's coloring this river, that color. Man, what a special place. I'm super fortunate to live in an area like this. And uh, just had to share it with you guys. This is beautiful. Oh, look at this, guys. Look at that lake right there. <laughs> oh. My goodness, look at this. Look at this place. It is absolutely gorgeous here. These are like floating logs. Oh, there's, there's fish surfacing right over there, snapping at flies at the surface. So this is absolutely beautiful. We gotta, let's go ahead and set up camp up by the van. Notice there's a little bit of trash laying around down here. So just before we get started fishing, I just wanna make sure that we clean up a little bit of trash. We're gonna set up camp and uh, just pick up a little bit of stuff that's laying around. I brought a trash bag along, spent five minutes just picking up after others and and, uh, and then we can enjoy this place because I can never, it's hard for me to enjoy a, a spot if there's trash laying around everywhere. All right, we got that packed out. Just a good way to start the day. Now we'll have more luck fishing. <laughs> Since we did a little cleanup first. So since it's been a while since we had the van out together, I thought I'd just show you guys uh, the setup. Uh, this here's, yeah, it's my camper van. Look at that, that's the bed right there. Then I store my uh, fishing kayak inside the, here as well. Walk through to the front. Got uh, full 12 volt power throughout the van, canned light LEDs, nice wooden ceiling. It's not 100% done. You can see there's still some insulation there. I've just been so busy with other fishing that I haven't made it uh, working on the van here for a while. Uh, and then over here, I've got my little kitchen. This thing's actually legit. Uh, it's got like a nice little built-in uh, propane burner right there. Then down here, I've got my just replaceable or refillable water uh, storage right there. Boom. So and then my kitchen counter extends. Didn't spend a whole lot of time or money on this little mod right here. And I've got just a second surface for cutting or just storing some stuff while I'm cooking. So up on top, I have a rollout uh, canopy that probably comes out to about here. And that way I can use the van if it's raining and have a nice little camping area outside. I'm just, I'm seeing fish surfacing down there. And it's too, way too exciting, way too exciting. I wanna give this just a little, one little cast, just one cast. A little snack. There we go, got the old fly pole already. The concept of fly fishing is that you're you're not fishing with like a lure or like live bait or anything. Instead, you're using little flies and you're imitating uh, real insects with these things. Uh, this guy here actually is the first one we're gonna use and this one was made by a subscriber, his name's Steve. So let's go ahead and get down there to the lake 
and just make a couple casts. I'm just really curious if they'll take a fly like this. Otherwise, I've got some smaller flies we can try out too. This is a, a kind of a big one, uh, more like a, a streamer, but we're gonna fish it at the surface. A little drop of this loon aquel, put that on our fingers, smear it all over your fly, so that way it floats on the surface. All right, here we go. Wow, look how beautiful it is here. Here goes nothing. Little guy, it's you and me, little fly, let's do this. Kind of hungry, haven't had a lunch yet. All right, here we go. Here we go, it's action time. I'm already fashionably tangling up everything. First cast. So a couple of you said uh, if you're fishing in lakes, just kind of don't really strip the line, but just make it dance a little bit. Make that fly dance. Ooh, that was a good cast. That felt really good. Supernatural. What I love is just seeing that fly, the whole line cast out, roll out, and then the, the, the actual tip at that fly line just bloop, lands nice and straight in the water and the fly is far away from the, uh, the floating line. My guess is that just looks the most natural to these fish. Ooh, that was a terrible cast. That's okay. Still improving on my fly cast, guys. I ain't no expert at this. Oh, there was a fish that definitely just jumped out there. There's fish here. Ooh, I'm definitely knocking the trees behind me here. <laughs> Don't want that. Little fish just uh, surfaced right there. Maybe we can, maybe I can cast to him. Oh, oh, we had a bite, we had a bite. We had a bite, I missed him though. Don't, oh, no, 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 I got snagged up in the grass. It's not what we want. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He bit, he bit. He actually came up to the surface and snapped at the fly. He's really small though. All right, so far no bites on the uh, fly. So we're gonna just switch things up a little bit. I've just got a little ugly stick here with a cheap little uh, Pfluger reel on it. Uh, and then we're gonna try out the bullet lure, baby. Uh, and then we've got my favorite setup in the world with me. And that's just, uh, this is just an ultra light little Akuma Salilo uh, and a little Cast King 500, just a tiny little micro uh, spinning reel on there. And then we've got a, a slip float. Uh, we're gonna throw a worm on there. I'm still learning as a fly fisherman. I'm not like a pro at that. So uh, this stuff I'm a lot more comfortable with and I know that we'll catch something. Well, I think we will. There we go. So this is how that little guy is hooked up. Uh, I just slid him all the way up the hook. The top end is slid over the eyelet of the hook. So he's actually sitting all the way up on the line, completely hiding the top of the hook. And then down here, we've got just a little tail end still wiggling around. And then we've got the hook shank or the, the hook point uh, coming out of the worm right there hopefully get a hookup. This here seems to be like the best way for me to hook up a worm. There's like an angry chipmunk here somewhere. Oh man. I'm gonna have like squirrels in the van. I realized the door's open, so I'm, yeah, we're definitely gonna get squirrels in the van. Damn, I forgot that. 
Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just cast out this bobber rod here. It's set at about probably two and a half feet deep. So we're just gonna get that baby out there. Oh yeah, and she's she's looking good. She's looking really happy there. All right. Time for the bullet lure. Come on, baby. Let's do this. Oh, that was a majestic cast. That was like a freaking 50 yard cast with the bullet lure, guys. That's good luck. And there's a trout right in front of me, probably 10 feet in front of me, there's a trout. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, there's gotta be so many little trout looking at it. Oh, got a bump. Uh, maybe it's just some, some grass. There's definitely a little bit of stuff on it. I don't know, we'll, we'll say it was a bump. We'll say for sure it was a bump. We're gonna try a slightly faster retrieve. I think these wild fish like a fast retrieve, guys. I know a lot of people have said retrieve slow, but these fish wanna chase something up here. Oh, that's a fish. That's a fish, baby, we got one on, let's go. <laughs> It feels okay. Oh, he's just spinning in. He's spinning in. He's a little one. He's a little guy. Oh, come on, baby. Come on. Oh, he's beautiful. He's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. He's a beautiful little brook trout. Look at that. Let's get him in the water here. Let's get him in the water. There we go, he unhooked himself. He wasn't hooked badly at all. Let's go ahead and wet our hand before we even touch him. I don't want to handle him too much. We're going to let this little guy go. But look at his color. Look at this beautiful fish. Look at the fins. I think these are probably the most beautiful trout in the world. Brook trout are not actually trout. They're in the char family. They're not like brothers or sisters to uh, like rainbow trout. They're more like a cousin. So they're related to like Arctic char, uh, Dolly Varden, but he's looking really good. So let's go ahead and just let this little guy go. I just love that white color on their fins. And he's off. That's freaking beautiful. I was oh, so happy to meet that little guy. Um, I don't really, there, so there's no minimum size here. I want to try and catch a bigger one. Now I know that uh, these Eastern brook trout don't get very big here in this area. So for right now, I want to try and target a big one. We're going to try hard to do that. But if we can't catch any big ones, then we will keep a couple of the small ones. Like I said, this is a lake and there's zero minimum size. I'll, I'll eat a baby if we have to, but I don't want to. Hey guys, check this out. These are wild uh, berries that, that you can eat. Now, if you guys are ever eating like wild berries or anything in the wild, don't like, I mean, do your own research. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and pick these guys because uh, that's going to make a nice little wild dessert. Mm, I can't resist. I'm like a cow. I'm just like eating. Mm. Oh, man. It's delicious. Just look at this. They're like blueberries. They're wild blueberries, essentially. Yeah, a little bit of uh, some lichen in the bottom to start everything up. And we're not, not gonna go super hardcore here. I've got a lighter with me that we're gonna use tonight. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a wet fire, guys. Wet fire. Here we go, come on. Come on, baby, let's do this. We did it, we got a fire. We're gonna make something special, guys. We're making something special. So now we're just gonna cook up a little bit of chili. I'm really hungry. Uh, I forgot a can opener, my bad. So here's a little little trick for you guys. Oh. You can actually open those things with a pocket knife, just in case you didn't know. It's probably not good for the knife. It needs to be sharpened <laughs> afterwards, but in a pinch. This is how you know a guy's hungry. <laughs> oh, sweet goodness. <laughs> All right. 
Oh, did I just wipe that off on my pants? <laughs> the rules of the woods. <laughs> a little bit of some vegetable oil. Those mushrooms and the onions and the chili. I'm definitely gonna lick this pan when I'm done with it. 100%. Guys, just being out in the woods, mm, just such a magical place, you know? I think there's like a lot of negativity and like a lot of like, you know, hard times going on in the world right now and it's all legitimate, but it's just like, I feel like sometimes people forget about how amazing the world really is and how much beauty there is out there. So sometimes you just have to come out here and see it. I feel like if everyone just came out here and saw like how amazing the world really can be and just how nice the world is, it could like, I don't know, I think it could really just help with everything going on. Morning guys. I slept in a little bit. It's really beautiful out though. Check it out. We got, we got some sun. So it is time to start. I was gonna say fishing, but we need to make coffee first. Priorities. Yeah, this morning I'm charging my batteries with with some solar. I'm excited to go fishing too, but like right now I'm really excited about this coffee. And check this coffee out here. This is uh, what Batdoor from Bronson Dancing Goats coffee. I think it's like local and stuff. Tried it already once. It's really delicious. Came from one of you guys, so thank you, man, for hooking me that up. I checked my PO box, and all of a sudden there's a little little surprise gift in there, along with this French press. So that was. Dude, super cool, man. Thank you. That's forever living in the van now. So if you guys have cool stuff you want to send, just send it to my P.O. box. I've got in like the video description as well as on the website. Oh, oh, jeez. Nice and slow, baby. All right, cheers, guys. Now this kayak here, it's a Feel Free Lure 11.5. Uh, what's really cool about this kayak is that it has a wheel back there in the keel, making it just extremely easy to move around all by yourself because the thing weighs like over 100 pounds. Ooh, forgot some worms in the kayak. I wonder, oh, well, I don't know, no longer wonder if they're okay. They're, they're not okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There we go. We're going to try and get out a little bit further. I, I did a few more casts and um, didn't get any more bites here. So where do you guys want to go? Should we go like uh, over to the trees or should we go this way, just kind of around the lake or straight through? I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm feeling yet. All right, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna troll. I think that's just what we're gonna do. Why not troll if we've got the kayak? Uh, so I'm just gonna make a little little cast out there. Uh, that was that was good. That was good. So now we gotta move. Oh, there's a little fish jumping right there next to us. That's good. That has to be a good thing, right? I ain't no expert, but but fish jumping is a good thing. <laughs> Oh, that was a hit, that was a hit. We just got slammed. Come on back, come on back, come on back. I'm just gonna check this. I just wanna make sure we're not like dragging something or have like a little little fish on or something. Oh, that's a fish. That's definitely a fish. <laughs> Feels like a little one. Feels like a little one. Oh man, come on fish. Come on baby. Oh, he's tiny, he's tiny. Oh man, do we wanna net him? Yeah, we're gonna net him. We just wanna take a little peek at him. <laughs> Get him right back in the water. Oh, perfect, bullet lure came right out. Don't worry, buddy, don't worry. We're not gonna eat you, you're, you're even smaller than your buddy. Look at that fish, gorgeous. We're just gonna let him right go. 
and oh <laughs> I'm just gonna like cast over to shore there hope we can get a little a shore fish Oh, that's a fish. <laughs> I saw him take it right in front of the freaking kayak. That was crazy. Oh, <laughs> oh, he's tiny. He's tiny. We're not even going to net him. There we go. He got off. Popped right off by himself. Problem with the, the brook trout in this lake is that there's so many of them. It's, kind of, it's called an overabundant lake where there's so many trout that they're competing with each other for the food and there's only so much food, so none of them actually grow really big. So these are lakes that uh, Fish and Wildlife wants us to come out to, uh, to to harvest some of these fish so that they're not competing as much. That way you can eat some of the small ones and the remainder gets to grow big. Oh, that's a fish, that's a fish. Man, this bullet lure's on fire, guys. It is on fire right now. Oh, there he is. Man, we should have kept that first one. That was the best uh, best size so far. That's how it goes. I think uh, letting that first one go is also good luck. That's why we're catching so many other ones right now. Whew, they're just, the trout are super hot right now. They're super hot. They're just all over the place back there. Oh, that's a fish. That's a fish. <laughs> fish on, baby. <laughs> Is that a better size? <laughs> That's the spot, man. <laughs> All right, so I tied up a Carolina rig for uh, my bobber pole. Uh, so this is no longer a bobber pole now. We're gonna try and fish off the bottom because maybe there's gonna be a big fat trout hanging out down low. So we're gonna throw on some power bait. I've still got my worm from the bobber fishing and we're gonna throw him on the bottom of that hook. Kind of form that into one, one ball with a little worm dangling off the bottom. And that right there, that's the pill, baby. I want this way the heck out there. All right, there we go. That wasn't super far, but you know what? That's far enough for right now. So what the power bait is on there for is, yes, of course, it's also a good trout bait. Um, but primarily what I'm trying to use that for right now is to float up uh, the bait off the bottom. Because when you're bottom fishing for trout, you never want your bait just laying on the bottom. You always want it suspended. But then they get close and they see that little worm dangling off the bottom. And boom, it's game over. So that's, yeah, that's, that's the trout pill, just so you guys know. Uh, works really well up in the lakes here. So I just switched from the bullet lure over to a little uh, Panther Martin. Uh, I've never used one of these before, but we're just gonna give this little guy a try. I've just heard such good things about the Panther Martin lures that I've just been all too curious to try one. Oop, cast it over some grass accidentally. Oh, that's a fish, <laughs> right away. He took it right as it hit the water, that's crazy. Ooh, we gotta get him through all this grass. Stay on, little guy, stay on. Ooh, we're gonna scoot him over it all. Scoot him over it. There we go, look at that. So these little Panther Martins, I guess they work just fine. Oh man, look at the color on this one. He is just so pretty once again. But he wants to swim off, he's, he's ready to go. <laughs> oh, that's a fish, that's a fish. Decent, might be good. <laughs> He's pretty small. <laughs> oh, you know what? Man, you know what? Ah, he's like one of the bigger out of the bunch. Dang. Okay, this is gonna be a tough moment here. Oh, 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 there we go, there we go. Oh, he's in the tackle box. Not huge, but this is one of the bigger ones in this lake. Um, so, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and keep this guy. I've totally forgot the new bonker, so we're just gonna use the old school one here again. All right, three, two, one. There we go. Just want to make sure that he's out, not feeling anything anymore. He's out of his misery. There we go, that's a fish.
Guys, the uh, bottom rod just moved. Bottom rod just moved, I think. Oh, yeah, it moved again. I think a fish just took the bottom rod. It took the pill. Oh, shit. Oh, here we go. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's stuck. Oh, crap. Uh-oh, we might have to rescue mission this one. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I don't want to lose this fish. Dang it. The fish might have swum into... Oh, man. What the heck happened here? It must have gotten tangled around a, a branch down there or something. He's like wrapped around a branch down there. I can see the fish, but if I pull on it, it's just gonna bust the leader. I've got a plan. <laughs> We're gonna do this. This is, this is where it gets fun. Okay. All right, it's happening. I'm not losing this fish. I'm gonna go right over him. It looks like maybe some crawdads got to him already. got the fish in the probably about 40 minutes it took me to get uh, my my swim goggles and change real quick he got killed by by some crawdads oh that blows but uh looks like they just kind of ate his uh they went for his gills that's crazy they went for the gills first so all the meat's still there so we'll eat this baby where we're not wasting anything damn oh that's freaking crazy <laughs> oh. I can't believe how fast the crawdads got to that that fish. They just went straight for his gills. <laughs> Completely gilled him. No trophy, no trophy, but good size for this leg. So we'll eat that little bugger. I'm getting hungry too. So we did really good. We did really, really good. I think that's pretty awesome that we caught so many fish on a variety of things. Um, so what we're gonna do now is uh, cook them up. All right, to cook these trout, we're gonna start out with the basics. Uh, for that, we've got a mushroom and some onion. There we go. Perfect, just enough to get a little wild, you know? We're just gonna go to town on this poor little mushroom. Now this here is called black garlic. Uh, what this is, is it's garlic that essentially got slow roasted at a super low temperature for like 20 days. And then it goes from, you know, like strong tasting white looking garlic to these little, check this out. And then this is what it turns into. It's actually like kind of the consistency and flavor of a plum. Oh, there we go. So we're just gonna add some butter here. I've got oil with me, but I really like frying mushrooms, onion, and fish in butter. It's just, it's delicious. We're gonna need a lot of butter because we're frying a bunch of stuff in here. It's not just the fish. <laughs> we're just gonna throw these onions in. And onions and mushrooms can essentially go in at the same time, but they are the first that you wanna throw in. Oh yeah. Oh man, I'm so hungry guys, like fishing all day and caught a lot of fish. All right, time for a little pepper. Mm. 
just a little bit of Danish sea salt. Oh, oh man. Come on, you knew this was coming. <laughs> a lot of people ask me about the salt. So a little fun fact, uh, this stuff here is actually made uh, in big tubs of seawater over a wood fire in little seaweed huts on an island in Denmark. And um, what's interesting about the seawater there that they make the salt out of is it's full of all sorts of minerals. So it's not just sodium. That's why I like to throw in more of the salt because you're not getting a sodium overload. You're getting all sorts of essential minerals in a supernatural way. Throw the biggest one in first. And we're throwing them in, skinning everything. We're gonna eat the whole darn thing. Super exciting. Uh, then we're gonna, oh, we're just gonna throw in the other ones here too. Now, because you guys always want me to eat the trout tails, I'm gonna like make sure that these guys get really fried. I've never eaten brook trout before, so I am really excited at what this tastes like. I'm also curious what the skin looks like once we flip it here. Oh man, beautiful, it still retained that color. So at this point, this is when I'm gonna throw in that black garlic. Because that stuff, just like regular garlic, will overcook really, really easily. I brought a few french fries that I wanted to add to this whole creation. Just kind of get them a little crispy in there. So the way that you can tell if a trout is done is just to see if the meat peels off the bones. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that, just fall right off the bones there. Alright, so there's the tails and we'll just throw these french fries right there just so the grease can kind of... There we go, nice and crunchy. So what I've noticed is that the fillets have like an orange stripe down the middle. It's really weird. Throw that tortilla on there. I think they're ready. Oh yeah. So here comes the trout. Now we're just going to throw a little tiny bit of this chipotle kicker sauce on. I want to try what eastern brook trout tastes like here. Tell you what, we're going to grab a big old, a fat piece. Let's go ahead and just try this just like that. Mmm. Interesting. Just very, very flavorful, very pleasant. Kind of like just a delicious rainbow trout is kind of what that tastes like. Maybe a little like a cutthroat? Hard to say. I mean, they all kind of taste very similar, but it does taste trouty. So even though Eastern Brook Trout is not a trout, it does taste like trout. So that's kind of cool. Um, so we got a couple different little wraps here that I made. One with those fries, and because I know not everyone would want fries in their trout wrap, I made one without. So let me know in the comments which one you guys would rather eat. The one without the fries or with the fries? or both. <laughs> and because you guys always ask me to do this, here's the little trout tails. It's like potato chips. If you guys have ever had like those, like what are they called, like pork rinds or something? That's what it tastes like. Trout tails taste like pork rinds. Now the biggest question is which one do we go with first? Uh, we're gonna start, we're gonna start simple. We're gonna start simple and then we'll work our way up. So this wrap has onions, mushrooms, crisped cheese, uh, avocado, the black garlic, the brook trout, and a little bit of that chipotle kicker, kicker sauce. Let's see what this one tastes like. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. That black garlic just gives it a little bit of that plummy sweetness. Crisping the cheese like that in the pan, I know it looks funny and I do it all the time, but there's a reason it's really good. The avocado adds a lot of creaminess as does the sauce. The onions and, and mushrooms just give it that earthy undertone. That's really darn good. Oh man, this is an angry wrap. Very angry. A lot of stuff in there. It doesn't want to close all the way. Let's just see if the fries turn out crunchy. 
very crunchy. All right, here we go, baby. Here we go. <laughs> mm. Damn, that's good. So despite these trout unfortunately not growing any bigger in this lake, uh, they're pretty darn tasty. I gotta say. So thank you for joining. If you enjoyed this, give the video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you want to see in the next video. And we will see all of you next week for the next fishing adventure. Till then, you all know it. Fish on, baby.